everyone, I'm Brandi Van Patten, the content manager here at EMS Environmental. Today I'm talking with Alan Blanchard, the president of EMS Environmental. Today we're going to discuss phase two environmental site assessments, just in case you had a phase one ESA completed and you're just not sure what your next step is supposed to be. So we'll discuss what exactly a phase two environmental site assessment is and what the completion process looks like, and also how EMS can help you with your phase two environmental site assessment needs. So Alan, a good place to start. Can you explain what a phase two environmental site assessment is? Sure, in the, in the phase one process, we looked for recognized environmental conditions, and what we call them RECs. A REC is the potential for a hazardous material or petroleum product to be on or at a property. Um, doesn't mean that there was a spill, but it means there is the potential of a spill. So let's say the phase one, um, we noticed staining. Um, so if the staining was outside of a waste oil tank, for example, we'll take surface samples. We might call this a limited phase two, where we're just taking surface samples to see if any of that oil got into the ground. Now, since we're looking for waste oil, we're going to look at volatile organic compounds, um, semi-volatile organic compounds, and metals. We'll take samples, run them by the lab, and have that analyzed. Now, if that um, soil contamination extends beyond our sampling depth, we may install soil borings, take soil samples, um, install our groundwater monitoring wells, to find if the groundwater contains um, products related to that um, oil spill. Um, if we find underground storage tanks, if it's new tanks, we may just do a tank, uh, tank tightness test. Otherwise, we're going to do the same thing with soil borings, ground, groundwater monitoring wells, samples. We'll use some field instrumentation as well and <clears throat> to give the buyer or even the seller an idea what might be there. Now, if the, uh, the wreck was a drum with unidentified chemicals, we'll sample the drum, find out what the chemicals are, um, if there was a potential for them to be spilled, like if there was a, a floor drain, a dry well, uh, <clears throat> any kind of a pit, we're going to take samples from there, characterize the extent of the potential contamination. Okay, what would the next step be for a property owner if wrecks are found during the phase one environmental site assessment? <clears throat> that time, we would just recommend a phase two, and it could be a limited phase two, or a complete phase two. Sometimes there'll be multiple areas on a property. If you find uh, an old transformer, old transformers used to contain PCB oil. So we'll sample for PCBs around the transformer. Go ahead. <laughs> what are some of the most common tests that are performed during a phase two environmental site assessment? Um, the common tests are soil and groundwater samples, um, and as well as samples from um, floor drains and things like that. Becoming more common now is indoor air quality testing. We could test for biological contaminants like mold or um, indoor chemical contaminants depending on if there's a soil contamination outside that could be impacting the indoor air quality or even processes inside that could have impacted the indoor air quality. How do phase two environmental site assessments vary from property to property? All depends on the kind of activity. If it was a dry cleaner, then we're going to be looking for dry cleaner related chemicals. That, in that case, it's perchloroethylene. That's the strange one because it actually can sink and migrate through concrete. And it's heavier than, than water, so it sinks, but we can sample for that, trace materials of that in the soil and in the groundwater. Um, if there was no dry cleaning, and there was, a, was an old gas station or there were tanks, then we're going to be looking to volatile organic compounds related to gasoline. Okay, so a quick recap. Phase two environmental site assessments will typically only be required if wrecks are found during the, or identified during a phase one ESA. That's correct, unless uh, a buyer wants to get ahead of the game, do a site assessment. That way, nothing can ever come back on him because he'll have a, he'll have a report that says, I have a phase two, it was clean when I sold the property, and now that, you know, if anything happened, it wasn't my fault. Okay, that's good to know. If you have any questions about phase two environmental site assessments, please feel free to check out our blog 
or you can even give us a call to talk to one of our professionals today. Thank you for watching. Thank you.